What's good, everyone? This is DJ's Raw and Cut Truth, giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. And boy, oh boy, I'm excited. The Orange Blossom Classic, it's on its way. I, I know you all are very excited. I'm excited. Uh, the whole HBCU family is excited to watch some good football. I think will be good fo football, and I hope it is. It's going to be on national television. Yes, we had all corn versus NCCU as the first game on a major network that our HBCU teams going against each other. I get that. But I'm talking about two teams who everybody in their mama knows this is a marquee matchup. FAMU versus Jackson State. FAMU being new to the SWAC. They want to win this game to show that they're still FAMU and that the SWAC is not on their level. Their fans have been talking, and that's and that's what, what you expect. It's fun. This is what football is all about. So shout out to FAMU. But, man, the players that are coming out of this uh, – Matchup, Marquise Bell, who some scouts believe is the best overall DB in not only just the SWAC or the HBCUs, but in the FCS. And then on Jackson State side, you have Dejon Warren, who I believe and many others believe is the best cover corner. Really, he's an overall corner, but when it comes to covering, I think Dejon Warren is the best at that. And then you have Xavier Smith from FAMU, who's explosive, electric on the field. I wonder if Jackson State's going to use Dejon to follow him throughout the game. If I was a defensive coordinator, I'm following Xavier Smith. I'm having my best player follow Xavier Smith the whole game, no matter what. I don't care if it's left side, right side. Uh, what Dijon has to do, and he knows this, is to show his versatility. He could go any other side. He could go on the slot. He could go anywhere to guard the best receiver. That's the best way to get to the NFL and really get drafted high coming from the FCS level. But Keontae Hampton, Aubrey Miller, the tag team linebackers uh, for JSU should show uh, their versatility. I think they're going to improve with him with a much better defensive line unit. As you saw in the spring, the defensive line for Jackson State was horrendous. Um, they they were out of place at times, and now they have added some dogs. Quintus Miller from Auburn, 6'2", 300-plus pounder. He's going to help with that. And then Antoine Owen from uh, Georgia Tech, who has started games. He's played in the ACC. So he knows what it looks like to play against good competition. Now, it's not the SEC, but ACC is not too far behind. <clears throat> he's played against Clemson. He's played against some real teams. So when you add those studs on the defensive interior, that's going to make Keontae Hampton and Aubrey Miller's job easy. But for FAMU, we we all know about Xavier Smith, but he's not alone. You got Chad Hunter and David uh, Meningo. They're versatile receivers as well. And I like what they've added to the cornerback position with Anton, Antoine Collier. Now, if you've seen UCF, you know this player stood out. It was all conference. I believe 2019. Him and Marquise Bell at the safety position is going to cause nightmares for off opposing offensive teams. Good luck trying to fade them. Unless a cornerback is just getting blown out <laughs> and just losing his tracks. Good luck for throwing a fade ball successfully with that sa uh, safety tandem. Now, Jackson State has the horses. 
to get some big plays in. Shane Hooks, Joshua Lanier, Malachi Wyman, um, and plenty of others, man. They they got so many offensive weapons that you can't even count. You can't even count. And I know what people are going to say. They're going to say, well, they're, they're not in any HBCU all-conference list. Look, no matter what ranking comes out, when you just transferred in and you were playing in a, in a tougher conference and you were sitting on a bench because certain players – we're NFL bound. That's what's going to happen. Like Shane Hooks. It would not surprise me if Shane Hooks goes off this season and becomes an all-conference receiver. It wouldn't surprise me at all. He's 6'4", 200-plus pounds, and he runs like a gazelle. Keith Corbin, I didn't even mention him. You saw what he did at Houston. He's a baller. So they're going to have weapons. Now I'm putting this out here. When they go empty, when Jackson State goes empty, the opposing defense better not blitz them. Because if they blitz them, somebody's getting open. No matter if it's Malachi Wyman or uh, Warren Newman. or anybody else, somebody's getting open. So FAMU's better off just playing zone. Play zone, matchup zone. Uh, do not go man-to-man -man with this team. Now, I should be saying that with all SWAC opponents. If you go man-to-man, -man, you're doing what Jackson State wants you to do. And that pride, that pride is something. That pride can make you... <laughs> make you do horrible things on the field. And Coach Simmons from FAMU, he's a smart coach. Um, he knows that he's not going to be doing man-to-man -man the whole game. If, uh, and one thing about FAMU, if they win this game, Coach Simmons will be looked at by a lot of teams in the FBS. He's probably getting looked at him right now. But if he beats this team, knowing that Jackson State has all that talent on offense and defense, all that talent, I'm going to predict that FAMU, if, the, if FAMU wins this game, they'll probably lose one game. But it would it surprise me if FAMU wins all their games? No. If they beat Jackson State. That's why Jackson State has to win this game. You cannot afford to have FAMU win if you're Jackson State because if FAMU's winning, they're taking it to the bank. The only game they'll probably lose to is UCF, which is a non-conference, uh, not UCF, USF, University of South Florida, which is a non-conference oppon opponent. That's about it. In my opinion, I think I think that fam you can beat Alabama A and I know they can beat Alcorn. No offense to them, but they match up really well, and they're going to score points in this conference. Maybe Southern can get them. Who knows? But if I'm Jackson State. If you lose this game against FAMU, I don't want to hear about, oh, we, we can win this conference. If FAMU wins this game, they got that side of the division. They're going to have that side of the division in wraps. They know it. Did you know that Coach Simmons had a um, – he was talking about how important this game is against Jackson State. And he said – and this is what he said from his mouth. He, he said he believes the winner of this matchup of the Orange Blossom Classic will have pretty much the uh, the front-running seat to the SWAC championship game. And I believe him. The East Division has Jackson State, FAMU, 
Mississippi Valley, Bethune Cookman, Alabama State, and Alabama A. That side of the division is the toughest side around. The West, I know they got Southern and Alcorn, but that East division, the healthiest team will win it. The team who executes their plays will win it. But, man, I'm excited. Uh, I just want a good show. That's all I'm asking for. Or as a fan of football, I want a good show. And I want these two teams to be the example. To tell these young brothers that it's okay to go to a HBCU. You don't have to go to Bama, Ohio State, Clemson, Oklahoma. And I like Oklahoma. I'm an Oklahoma fan. You don't have to go to these schools. You could go where you wanted, where universities treat you like family and understand your tribe and your culture. Unfortunately, in today's time, a lot of our people, not all, are brainwashed and thinking when you build with your own, you, you, you won't amount to anything. That's what they're teaching us. That's what they're indoctrinating us. That building for self and doing for self is not the way. Well, I'm here to say it is. I believe. And I'm not just saying for Jackson State. I'm saying it for all HBCUs. The time is now. Swag teams. I, I offer a challenge. I want all the swag teams to win their non-conference games the best way they can. At least have a winning record. Now, I know there may be some FBF teams that you just can't. <laughs> you just don't have enough bodies adept to compete. But besides it, win your non-conference games. And that's for the SWAC. The MEAC is 11-4 and four against the SWAC. They have the bragging rights. And they deserve it. They handle business. I, I've heard so many SWAC fans, man, and uh, like Alcorn. I heard their fans say this the whole time. Oh, we always win the SWAC. We're always undefeated. But when they play non-conference teams, they stumble. The outside public sees a SWAC as a weak conference. That's got to change. So what changes that, number one, Jackson State must play to their talent level. Now, I don't know if they're going to go undefeated or anything. They probably go 10 and 2. They got to play to their talent level and not lose because the talent didn't show up. It has to be other factors why they lose two games. And FAMU, FAMU just got to keep doing their thing. They got a good coaching staff. They have won a lot of games before in the MEAC. So they're battle tested. Uh, Alabama a and they got to handle up, man. South Carolina State, they got some DBs. They got to handle that one. Because if they do not win, the MEAC is going 12-4. and four. And that's not going to look good. So shout out to all the SWAC teams, MEAC, all HBCUs. Uh, this is exciting, man. I love this. I love this for uh, HBCUs. I love this for our people. Because at the end of the day, it's about us. This is DJ's raw and cut truth giving you the raw content that you deserve. Lee. And by the way, I didn't bring up Shadir because we always, you know, we always talk about it. But Shadir Sanders, he's talented. And whoever thinks he's not talented, I don't know what to tell him. Is he going to make rookie mistakes? Most likely, like all 
freshman do. But he's got arm talent. He's a pocket passer. He's not trying to run all the time. If he's going to run, it's going to be because there's nothing there. And my advice for Shadir Sanders, you have a good defense. Don't rush things. And if he has to manage game one to pull off that game, so be it. But I, I believe in a couple of matchups that they're going to progressively open the playbook even more and get comfortable and start taking some deep shots. But I'm excited. Y'all support these uh, HBCU content creators, Swag Buzz, the CFL podcast, uh, Off Script, Cut Day, shout out to Cut Day, uh, Hoop Jargon, and many more. This is DJ's Raw and Cut True. And again, I'm out. Peace.